I just bought this 70 year old car sight on scene and it's been sitting in a barn for 44 years. So I'm gonna do the right thing and try to get it running and driving, then drive it halfway across the state back to my shop. Seems like a good idea. No, it's not. There's like mountain ranges and stuff, but the plan is I don't have one. I think we'll start by just walking around this thing, drink it up a little bit, see where to start, and then we gotta get some miles, you know, under the belt. So let's dig in. This 50 Chevy may be your run-of-the-mill two-door coupe, but if we can get this back to the shop, I can see turning this into a really fun cruiser. It's a 1951 Chevrolet Deluxe, or Deluxe, depending on where you're from, I guess. It's got the fancy vent shades here. I think that was an option. You get that right out of the catalog. Also has the forehead vent right here. That is also a factory option, just scoops wind, you know, right, right in your eyeballs. Not good if you have allergies, though. The uh, side skirts are missing, so I think we could fix that by just heating up the rear end and dropping it lower to the ground, give the illusion, or we can run some poverty chrome, you know, get the duct tape across here. Not sure yet. Oof. <sighs> Smells like a used knee brace and Vegemite. Floor checker. Oh, yep, that failed. There's a little bit of a hole in the floor. Oh my goodness, the ignition sticks all be dipped. And they're the right ones. Throttle stuck. Check. Great. I've never got brakes. That's stuck. Check. Oh, we got a clutch. We're well on the way then. Oh. We got window crankage, door opener. There's a dead mouse or something in there. That's fine. We'll just close that. We'll close. We're gonna close that up. Okay. We got some rocks. I mean, I don't know what else the guy needs. Yep. Mm-hmm. Dirt daubers. We definitely got originalage going on. That's good. We got everything in here. Fuel make it happener, generators on it, starters in, lightning whirler, lightning can with the hoses. This is most likely gonna be a 216 or 216.5, they call them, because it has a three-speed manual, a three on the tree, the old bolt action, you know. We do have a 12-volt battery in here. That's kind of concerning. It gets a little spicy on the ignition system and whatnot in the starter. So I'm gonna jump right in, get into the fuel make it happen or here. We gotta make that, make some fuel happen. We got a one barrel, of course. That's gonna be a Carter. Oh, that's great. Throttle is just stuck wide open. That seems fine. So very first thing a guy's gonna have to do is just go ahead and snip this carb off. I'm sure it's gonna need a rebuild anyway. At least get the linkage and everything like that moving. Then we could set up some sort of temporary fuel system. Then we'll move on to, you know, can we get some sparkles, some lightning going in this thing? Okay, so fuel system, we gotta make sure the mechanical fuel pump works on this thing. I'd really like to try to avoid running a clicky clacky because we got a six volt system here, it looks like. So in order to do that, we gotta get the engine spinning so we can get that pump running. So I'm gonna check the oil first, make sure we got something in here. Yeah, there's some oil in it. Oh, wow. It's like straight 30 weight, actually. It's got some viscosity, no gasoline in it, no water, antifreeze, anything like that. So we can definitely crank it over with that oil and maybe even run it on it, hopefully, for a little bit, and we'll change it down the road. Next, we got to toss a battery in here. We'll try to put a right one in. Yep. Rid of that. This car also has anti-theft. If you notice here, both cables are red. That's so if someone tries to steal it, they just burn the thing down before they figure out what's going on. I like that. Yep. There we go. Little old school hot rodder secret. Run these eight volt batteries in here. You'll really get that starter just in Tokyo drift mode, you know, really spinning. I'm just gonna reach down, jump this across, see if this spins over. Yeah, 
Starter's engaging and retracting. Engine's rotating. We're in great shape. I can see the fuel line is broken off right here. We're not gonna be using the original tank anyway, most likely, because 44 years sitting, it's gonna be completely full of rust and dirt and grime and you name it. So we're gonna plug directly into that pump with my fuel tank down here. I'm just gonna prime it quick. 87 octane, it'll work. Bring that onto there. Go get me a clamp later and we're set. Yeah. Throw this up here. Run that pump for a second. We got pressure in there now. Jump it again, we should have fuel coming out of there like crazy. There we go. So we've got a makeshift fuel system and our carburetor should be done soaking over there, getting rebuilt. We'll tear into that thing, get all that put back together. Then all we gotta do is get sparked to this thing. And should fire off. Lots of corrosion on the points, which is to be expected. We could run a file or some emery cloth or some sandpaper through there, clean these up. This wire connection looks good. This one needs a fitting. I might just make a new wire and then we'll be good. Spady do dippy and a curly Q tail bop, about six feet long. I can make that. Six feet. Yep, get in there. Hootawaya! That's torqued. My back is hotter than Garth Brooks Live, and I ain't kidding you. Like that. Yep, it's really important to gap your sparkulators for optimal performance. Fuel economy. That one looks gapped, I guess. Yeah. Ignition system checked. Trouble shot, checked mark, crossed off, refixed, refurbished, done. So I'm gonna fill the carb bowl up with fuel here. This is a uh, chainsaw mix. It's gas from the 90s and a little bit of two-stroke oil. Throw a little bit in here. Yep, that's way too much. Now. We'll crank this thing over and hopefully hear it fire for the first time in 44 years. Yes! It sounds good. No, is it gonna sit here and idle? I can't believe it. But I guess I got to, I'm looking right at it. She's smoking good. Yes! That is unbelievable. It sounds absolutely amazing. It's smoking like crazy, that's to be expected. Ring's gotta come around. So it's showing over halfway in oil pressure, which on a 50s car would be like 15 pounds, which is completely normal, somewhere around there. Also showing that it's charging. Now we can check that quick, we'll put the digital meter on it. 8.3, I think we're good. This is how we gotta turn it off. Ah, the generator's gonna run it. There we go. I think we should pour some ice cube juice in this thing. See if the water pump is pumping, see if the thermostat is doing thermostat things, see if the head gasket is even gonna come back around after a heat cycle or two. And if it stays cool, then we can move on to, you know, does the clutch actually even work? Can we get it into gear? And if we can get it into gear, is it gonna move back and forth? Then we'll move on to, you know, last brakes. That's gonna be so much fun. The brake pedal is stuck up and will not go to the floor. We'll soak that down, see if we get that freed up because removing that master cylinder is an absolute bear. Been there, done it. 16.5 times I gave up once. So let's see what we got there. Well, for Pete's sake. Okay. We'll put some juice in there and then see if it comes back around. No, nope, it won't. Oh. I think I'm gonna have to take this master cylinder out. <clears throat> wow. Got one of 47 bolts out. 
Do you have a lens cover on that GoPro? I'm not saying I'm mad. I'm just disappointed in the progress. This is getting messier than Fergie's national anthem. How? How is that possible? And that's a little victory, you know. That's all a guy needs. Really simple process, you know. Like I was saying, just take your time. They'll come right out of there. Piece of cake. Good morning and welcome to day two of the 1951 Chevrolet Deluxe. Eight million pounds humidity rained all last night. And it's supposed to rain on and off through the afternoon. So I think what I'm gonna do is I had the wheels off the car and sat down and got some tires on last night. I think I'm gonna snip those on this thing and actually try to drive this back into the shed, get a little bit of cover. I can work in you know, minus 30 with snow blowing, but the rain on a guy's back, I just, gets my productivity down. Today's plan is just continue working on the brakes on this thing. We got the master cylinder in late last night, so I just gotta get all the brake, wheel cylinders, and shoes, and hardware. And I'm sure I'm gonna snap some brake lines off and all that stuff too. Great. This is what we're after. And you can see here on the wheel cylinder, look at that, just junk pouring out. That's all moisture, corrosion. So this thing is gonna be locked up. And what they're supposed to do is push these shuttles out, which spreads the brake pads out. And that's what stops you. We're gonna go ahead and tear all this off, get these wheel cylinders out. The tricky part is the rubber line connects to the hard line up here on the frame. Getting those two to disconnect without twisting or breaking the steel line is, you gotta be surgical. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Just rebuilding the back plate here. Now it's brand new. Since we ordered new rubber lines, we can just cut this one. Look how constricted that line is. No way fluid would have flowed through that. Kind of having to do this a little kitty wampus because I don't want to risk spinning the nut on that steel brake line like I was talking about earlier. So what we have to do is spin the wheel cylinder around this line, effectively tighten it while it's loose, then try to seat it into place. You can do an entire drum brake setup, just a pair of vice grips. Yes. Yep. There we go, one side done, three more to go. All I'm gonna do with these is just Hit them with some brake clean, make sure they're nice and clean, thoroughly inspect them again, hit them with some high temp grease, slide the drum back on and one done. Hear that rain? I'm so glad we moved in here. Dodged it. Well, the small thunderstorm that was supposed to go around us turned into a class nine hurricane. It is raining cats and kittens. Went ahead and got all the wheel cylinders and shoes and brake hardware in all the way around the car, but of course, all that work trying to save the hard lines at the frame was moot. Yeah, they broke all off at the master cylinder, so we ended up putting all new hard lines in this thing as well. Great. Everything's fine. Huh? <laughs> I don't know what I just ate. So after getting the new master cylinder in, I quickly discovered someone had been in here cobbling around with the brakes and it became really evident this is probably the reason the vehicle was parked. There were some parts in here from a later model Chevy and well, I had to fight to figure out the right fittings and hardware to make all this work, but it's finally bled. We have brakes at all four wheels. I think we're ready. Well, I think it's finally that time to put this 1951 Chevrolet Deluxe back on the road. Threw a fuel tank in the drinker side of the rig here, ran the hose straight through the glove box, which by the way, 
glove box light comes on, I'll be dipped. Now we're ready. I'm excited to drive this thing, for real. Speedometer works, no way. Oil pressure gauge is still working. We still got some oil pieces. It's charger late. Charging whirler is doing the thing. And the clutch, how good is it? It's at the very top. This is my favorite part right here. I just can't believe it. I guess I got to though, I'm looking right at it. That whining sound, I believe is the speedometer just putting in some work. It says 30, 50, 30, 52, 49, 46, 61, 28, 42. I don't know, I'm not an auctioneer is what I'm saying. Steering feels fine. I never really looked at anything. I just pretended everything was good, you know? Nice little first cruise here. I didn't check how much fuel we had. I guess I can just look right here though. About a gallon, maybe. 